Do you love the smell of branding? You need a feather burner. Let me walk you through what I got here. I have a model train rectifier, some resistance wire, a piece of one inch by eighth inch strap, and just a scrap piece of plywood. So I'm just measuring off about eight inches of that. And then I'm not drilling a hole all the way through this strap, just about halfway. And I'm marking it about two inches and then six inches from there. And that's going to be the stand for the arrow. And then you don't have to use a torch for this, but it's just easier if you do. So I'm just heating it up and making it into a 90 on both ends. And the only tricky part to this is uh, not burning your face off. So I'm just eyeballing it. They don't have to be perfect. Just getting them as close to 90 as I can. And then this is another little sketchy part. Because it was bent, it wouldn't fit under the bandsaw. And so I had to put it at an angle. And, you know, you're just worried about hitting your knuckles. Same with, I'm cutting out a little V, V notch for the arrow. And uh, it didn't really fit. So probably did something unsafe but I lifted lifted it off the table there just put it at an angle the corner's still resting so it's still pretty secure but it's not probably not ideal and then you just hit it on the old homemade belt sander that thing's kind of a piece of junk it doesn't have enough power but it works all right, I guess it's better than nothing. You can also just hit it with the file, which I did a little bit off camera. Just lining things up. Marking it about an inch, and then my pencil broke, of course, like always. You just drill a couple holes. You're going to need to countersink them so that way it sits flush on the table. It doesn't really matter what size you use. Just use whatever you have. I didn't go out and buy any of this stuff. It was just stuff I had laying around. Just looking through all my random part bins and stuff. So you just throw everything together. Just put a couple screws in it to hold it down. And just testing it there, that's how it's gonna work. I was gonna smooth it up or put something down so it didn't scratch the arrow shaft, but I ended up just leaving it and it was working just fine. And just put these little connectors on, which are a pain. So I just had these wire strippers handy, just sitting there. And uh, so I was using those to crimp it and it didn't work. So I should have just walked the five feet to uh, grab a better pair of pliers, but I just struggled through it, you know. So it doesn't really matter what you use. You could even, if you didn't have any connectors, you could just wrap it around the connection and then here's the hardest part of the whole thing you have to get this wire bent in the right shape that you want so I just got a scrap piece of wood cut out the profile that I wanted and I'm just kind of using that as a guide to uh, try to get it lined up the best I could without any kind of template or guide like that I don't even know if you could do it so just get some scrap wood cut ever cut out whatever profile you want 
it's gonna there's gonna be a ton of adjusting you have to work with it for a while before you get it exactly how you want it and you got the right height and everything but the good thing is once you do get it set as long as you're keeping that same profile you shouldn't have to mess with it too much especially especially after that um, that wire gets hot it kind of keeps its shape that's, I think it's called nichrom wire. It's a, just a resistance wire. And then here I am just trying it the first time. This is the first cut I was recording in case something blew up. So I would get it on video. And so it worked pretty good. It stinks pretty bad. If you've ever branded anything, it smells exactly like that. And there you have it. Well, it works. I don't want to take credit for this, so I didn't come up with this idea. A while back, I saw a video of a guy who had made a styrofoam, like a foam cutter, pretty much the same thing out of pretty much the same stuff that I got here. And I thought, oh, that would make a perfect feather burner. So I Googled it. A bunch of people had already thought about it. So it's not my idea. And I'm kind of bummed that I didn't come up with it. But there's some really good videos already out there. I think DIY Sportsman or DIY Hunter or some DIY guy has a bunch of YouTube videos. He has a video and he explains how all this works and what wire to use and all that kind of stuff. So go check out his video. I've been putting this off for a long time. The only reason why I'm doing it tonight is because I'm putting off another project. But it's really simple. This is really a 30 minute build, if that. Uh, you don't need any real special tools. You could get away with a drill and some pliers probably. But this is a seriously 30 minute feather burner. And it works just as good-ish as the Young feather burner. I've used those before, but they're crazy expensive. They're like, couple hundred bucks I have eight dollars invested in this and the only because the only thing I had to buy was the wire um, this came out of a like a train like from the 50s or something so super old but it's still good if you need to use it for your kids train or your train grandpa's train it doesn't matter you just take it off and you got your feather or your train controls. Uh, hopefully, if you've been thinking about a feather burner, this might inspire you to do some more research. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and uh, I'll do what I can to help. We'll see you next time.